Hi debaters, welcome to a brief introduction to NATO. I'm Maggie Berthium, Director of Debate at Woodward in Atlanta and instructor on the Spartan Scholars. In this video, we'll give it an overview of the organization, discussing its processes, members, and structure. Let's get started. We'll start by looking at what NATO is and the purpose of the organization. NATO, or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, is a political and military alliance based on a treaty signed in 1949. The goal of that treaty was to continue to link the fates of North America and Europe after World War II. NATO's headquarters are in Brussels, Belgium. The first Secretary General of NATO, Lord Ismay, is credited with saying that the purpose of NATO was to keep the Russians out, the Americans in, and the Germans down. It's possible he didn't actually say this, or maybe wasn't the first one to say it, but the gist is that the goal of NATO is to keep the USSR out of Europe, whether by force or by deterrence to keep America connected to Europe and involved in its fate and future, and to prevent German rise or rearmament by integrating them with the rest of the continent and making them obey rules. NATO served as a bulwark against the dangers of democracy as well. Post-World War II, governments were worried about their electorates pushing for war, like Germany, or the opposite, other European countries getting pushed around by the USSR because they knew their public wouldn't support another war after World War II. NATO was created by people trying to prevent another world war. The idea was to prepare for war so you don't have to do it. Here are some of the essential elements of NATO. First, NATO is founded on the idea of collective defense. An attack on one is an attack on all. This part of the treaty is Article 5, and it's been invoked only once after 9-11. But the idea is to ensure that others will not attack NATO countries because they know that the full force of NATO will come down on them if they do. Another important principle of NATO is sovereignty. NATO has no laws, no enforcement, and no power to punish civilians. Military resources, including personnel, are under national command, but are temporarily transferred to NATO command for joint missions. This means that commanders have limited power over their subordinates. A final important thing to understand about the main structure of NATO is that it operates on the consensus model. NATO is not a democracy. There's tons of consultation and negotiating. NATO doesn't have a power limit and it doesn't have any executive power. Instead, a NATO decision means that all 30 of the current nations agreed to a decision. Even one dissenter means NATO doesn't act. At the same time, the largest states often consult with each other privately or decide things quietly first and then push to get others on board. Here's some information about NATO membership. There are 12 original members of NATO. You can see them here in the purple. Officially, NATO is open to any European state in a position to further the principles of this treaty and contribute to the security of the North Atlantic area. Countries that want to join then follow a membership action plan to meet requirements. Now it's time for a short quiz. Go to the URL on your screen and take a quiz to see how you're doing on your geography. In addition to the 12 original members of NATO, 18 countries have joined since 1952. We can discuss why particular countries join to particular points in a future discussion, but for now, it's important to know where these countries are and which countries are now NATO members. So it's time for another quiz. Go to the URL on your screen and take the quiz there. See how well you can do. Non-member countries don't have decision-making power, but there are lots of other countries that also consult with NATO or even contribute to its missions. About 40 other countries have some level of relationship with NATO. Now let's talk a little bit about the structure of the organization. We're gonna stay on this slide for a minute because there's a lot of information here. The first thing to understand is that NATO is divided into a political side represented in red here and a military side represented in green. We'll start with the political side. The primary decision-making body for NATO is called the North Atlantic Council or NAC. Each country has a seat at the NAC and it meets once a week or more. It's chaired by the Secretary General of the organization. When NATO makes a decision, it goes to the NAC. In addition to the NAC, the Nuclear Planning Group, or NPG, has the same authority level as the NAC, but only for nuclear issues. It mostly deals with things like arms control and proliferation. All countries, except for France, which opted out, are members of the NPG. That means a country is a member of the nuclear planning group, even if that country itself does not have nuclear weapons. In addition to the NAC and the NPG, NATO has a number of subordinate committees on particular issues. Bridging the side between the political and the military side is the Secretary General of NATO. 
It's NATO's top international civil servant and the chief spokesperson for the organization who implements NATO decisions. The Secretary General is currently Jens Stoltenberg, J-E-N-S-S-T-O-L-T-E-N-B-E-R-G. The former Prime Minister of Norway, Stoltenberg has been the Secretary General for NATO since 2014. On the military side, the senior military authority in NATO is called the Military Committee. It's the link between political decisions and actual military action. It's also the primary source of military advice for the NAC and the NPG on the political side. It provides guidance to the strategic commanders underneath for allied command operations and allied command transformation. We'll talk about that in a second. But the main thing is that the military committee is in charge of translating political doctrine into military decisions and giving military information to the political leaders. Under the military committee are allied command operations or ACO, which plans and executes the Alliance's military operations. This is where the actual military units are located. It's, an, it's led by the Supreme Allied Commander Europe, or S-A-C-E-U-R, pronounced SECUR, and they are in charge of all military operations. The Allied Command Transformation Unit, or ACT, is in charge of looking ahead to future innovation and interoperability. They do things like planning, development, procurement, and production of new technologies for future war fighting. They're headed by the Supreme Allied Commander Transformation. This has been just a brief overview. Thanks for watching.